What's going on, guys? It's me, Mikey Pipes. Today is Thursday, May 19th. It's uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Ran a couple service calls earlier in the day. Created a great video on uh, a Navy and repair. But nonetheless, uh, the other day, I posted a video on a Rain Prestige uh, 410A system that wasn't cooling the house. Matter of fact, the outdoor unit wasn't coming on. Homeowner scheduled a service call. We installed the system about nine years ago. And we arrive, we take the front cover off. You know, we take the hood off the engine of the car, right? And we take a look at the ICC board. Some air conditioning systems have little miniature control boards in them, you know, or, or, or motherboards in a computer, for example. And... If you're fortunate enough, it'll actually tell you exactly what's wrong with it. So in this particular case, and I'll put a link in the description up down above. So if you want to reference the video, uh, the Rheem Prestige has an ICC board. You know, it get, gets wired with 240 volts. It gets R, it gets C, it gets Y1, Y2, if it's purpose for two-stage cooling. And it has a little LED display. And when I took the cover off and I dreaded what it was showing, but it showed 21 as the error code. 21 on an ICC board and a Rheem Prestige means the system is low on refrigerant. Essentially, that means that the pressure sensor or the low pressure sensor inside the condenser um, is not sensing enough pressure to close the circuit. What that means is that either the sensor is bad, which happens, but very rarely and infrequent, or there is lack of proper refrigerant, which means that since it's a sealed system, you have a leak. And I explained a bunch of options to the customer, my homeowner for my customer for over 10 years now. And the outcome from the community uh, was overwhelming. I received dozens of emails asking me for the form that I use that gets incorporated in the paperwork of the service call. I got dozens of emails. I got several calls to my office asking me, Mikey Pipes, can you please send me the PDF of this form? It was obviously that well received. And because I got such a great reception uh, of that video and the steps I took explaining in detail to the homeowner What's going on? I decided to make a dedicated video just on how to explain refrigerant leak options to your homeowner, your customer, whether it's, you know, the property owner, um, building management, you know, a tenant, which rarely occurs but unless they're responsible for upkeep and repairs on, on the, the home. But this will work on any refrigeration system, whether it's residential, like commercial, like a rooftop unit, for example, or maybe they have a traditional split system in a small office building. This scenario over these next, let's see, a uh, few pages, I break it down to a few pages here in this PowerPoint presentation, but, and, I, and it's on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. You can incorporate it onto, if you're still using, you know, carbon copies with, you know, customer copy, office copy. You can incorporate that into your paperwork. Um, or if you're using mobile dispatching, uh, my company uses ServicePal. Um, I just added it as a page to my air conditioning invoice. Um, very easy. And if you have any questions on that, um, feel free to email me. But we're going to talk about five options and or questions that fully explains the outcome to your client. Very easy. So... Let's get started. I say this quite often during my YouTube videos, and that's a quote by Sims, um, Cy Sims. He's the CEO of the Sims Corporation. In the New York metropolitan area, there was a, a clothing retailer, a chain clothing retailer called Sims. And their slogan or their logo, slogan, right? Not logo, was an educated consumer is their best customer. And I couldn't agree with that even more. When you educate your, 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 your customer, your client, several things happen. For starters, you develop and strengthen your relationship with your client. You do. If it's a brand new customer and you 
basically seem, you will have the appearance that you are the man or woman, right? Or they or he, it, then, whatever your non-binary thing. <laughs> Just joking. If you, we'll save that for another video. But you develop and strengthen your relationship with your customer. And that speaks volumes. You know, you will give the perception of value. And that is golden. And it also shows that you care and concern about their property. Right? And it also demonstrates respect for your client's time and their hard-earned money. Right? Going over these steps about, hey, I got a leak. In, you have a leak in your air conditioning system and what's going to, you know, do X, Y, and Z. No, take the time to explain what's going on. And it demonstrates that you respect their time and their hard-earned money. And one thing to really just, just dig in and let that nail into home, it commands professional authority. It basically, you command that you know exactly what you're doing without a doubt. You're not just there to get the job done and over with and move on to the next, right? So let that sink in while we talk about the, the basics, okay? So as a technician, you've diagnosed the system is low on refrigerant. It could be empty or it could just be undercharged, right? This applies for both. So keep in mind, and this is what you need to explain to your customer, and you'll show them the form at the end, but air conditioning and heat pump systems are sealed refrigerant systems. They're not open to the atmosphere. The only time that, you know, any kind of, they are exposed even kindly is when refrigeration gauges are hooked up, manifolds are hooked up to the service ports. That's the only time they're not sealed. And even then, for that split second, that's it. Refrigerant will escape a little bit, right? That's the only time they're not sealed, that split second when they're being worked on or serviced, right? So you need to explain that your system is low on this refrigerant. Very simple. Keep it simple. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. But you're going to also explain to them once you just engage in this conversation, right? More detail. But first, you explain that, hey, it's a sealed system. It's a low on refrigerant. There must be a leak in the system. And yes, there could be maybe a sabotage, right? But that's very f rare. And I'm sure people will comment that, you know, you know, these addicts and crackheads or whatever you want to call them, you know, they'll go on huffing refrigerant or they'll cut the lawn, whatever. Um, there must be a leak in the system and it will not go away. This leak will not go away. It will only get worse. Okay. Now that you got that out of the way, you're, you're having a conversation with them, asking them any questions so far. And okay, now, I'm going to go over five potential options on how you would like to, or how would you like me to, as a technician, as the HVAC technician, how would you like to proceed? Okay. Just like that. Now that you know it's a sealed system, it's low in refrigerant, there must be a leak, and it's not going to go away, let's discuss five possible outcomes, and then let me know what you would like to do. And if at any point you don't understand something, and you know, I can probably read that from you, but if at any point I don't, you don't understand something, please, you know, it's I'm here. I'm not. You're not getting. You're not being charged more for this, right? I'm here to make sure that you have the best information to make the best decision. Okay, let's go. Number one. You. What if you do nothing? My air conditioning is proving. Providing some cooling, what if I do nothing? Well, that's a great question. But this will be a costly mistake for several reasons. Number one, you'll have excessive operating costs. And what that means is that a unit that's low on this Freon or Puron, or 407, whatever you're using, right, the refrigerant, if it's low on refrigerant, it's going to consume more electricity, okay? 
Number one. Number two, your compressor life is going to be shortened, right? And that's simple because it's going to run longer and work at harder at a higher temperature. And you will excessively wear and tear the compressor down to the point where you'll have compressor failure. But also, there'll be a point where you're going to have contamination in the system. Now, again, keep in mind, we're trying to keep it simple. K-I-S-S, -S, right? You're contaminating the system. Like, what do you mean? Like, well, listen, you know, there's without confusing you, ma'am or sir, you have one pipe going into the house and one pipe coming into the house. Right? One pipe has high pressure, one pipe has low pressure. If the low pressure gets below or gets, becomes negative and the leak is there, it's going to suck in the atmosphere. And the atmosphere is no bueno or no good for a sealed system because now you're contaminating virgin you know, refrigerant. It doesn't get used. Refrigerant doesn't get consumed like gas in a car or oil in your car engine. It doesn't need to get replenished or replaced. It's sealed, right? Except when it's not anymore. So if your system is sucking an atmosphere into it, right? That refrigerant now is degraded and it's contaminated. It has what we call non-condensables. And then you could, you know, play with words with that, but try to keep it simple, but also giving them the right tools to make the right decision. And that goes to number two. What if I just add a refrigerant? Well, you can. If you have, if you get a cut, a gash on your skin and you need stitches, right? Your, your skin, or if you put a bandaid on, your skin will eventually heal, right? But if you actually cut like a vein or, you know, a major blood vessel and you lost, you know, a couple pounds, pounds, you know, some pints or liters of blood, well, then it's more serious. You need a transfusion. But and nonetheless, your skin, you know, you're not a, you're, you're, you're a biological person. You know, it's created by God. You know, it's your skin. You cut yourself, eventually it'll heal, right? But a hole in something that's man-made uh, is not going to go away. It's only going to get worse. So if I give you more blood in your system, we're actually fixing the, the, the cut, you know, the major cut, you know, you're going to, it's going to keep, you're going to keep bleeding. So it's only a temporary remedy, right? When the replacement refrigerant or when the more gas, and I hate using words like that gas or, you know, Puron or, or the refrigerant, the, 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 the Freon, you know, re refrain from calling it the gas, May maintain professionalism. When the refrigerant that I just added to your system, ma'am or sir, leaks out eventually, and that could happen today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, whenever it'll be. It could be right after. It could be, I could leave, pull away, and then an hour later, it, it, your system's not cooling again. That's a massive leak, and but you want to stress that. It, it's an unknown amount of time how long it'll last. But the system will stop working once it leaks out again. And therefore, we do not warranty refrigerant and or the labor if the leaks are not repaired. It's on the form right there. Okay? Number three. This is what I did on the service call with the Rain Prestige, right? The, I explained these five options to the customer with the five potential questions. We went with the leak sealant. So question number three, will a sealant fix the leak? Injecting sealants into the system may or may not stop the leak. Listen, it's not guaranteed. You see that right in the bottom. Leak repairs performed with a sealant are not warranted. You stress that. If I add this sealant for X amount of dollars, right? My company charges $175 to inject ultra, um, Super Seal, Easy Seal by a new Calgon. It has ultraviolet diet. We charge $175. Right? If I inject this into the system, A, there's no warranty or guarantee, but I also need to add the refrigerant back into the system. So you may be looking at it $1,000 with labor and refrigerant. It's possible. And there's no guarantee on it. Right? It may work. It may not. But after the sealant is installed, the AC has to run. The air conditioning system needs to run for a minimum of one hour. It has to circulate and travel throughout the refrigeration piping, all the components. And there are four major components of an air conditioning system. Right? You know, two are located outside, two are located inside, and there's pipes that connect two together. And the leak could be anywhere in those systems. Um, but if the leak, the sealant does not, fails, right, the refrigerant will leak out once again, and the system will stop working. 
And there it is, right in bold, underlined. Leak repairs performed with a sealant are not warranted. Number four, thank you for bearing with me, by the way. We're almost done. There's a couple more slides of this. And I, I trust me, if you're an HVAC tech who does not practice this on every single service call, eventually you will thank me. So please stick around for a few more minutes and trust me, you'll like this. Trust me. I've been doing this for several years and only last year did I implement this form on my ServicePal mobile dispatching and, er and invoicing app. It's a page. The customer has to see it, has to sign it, and it's dated and it's attached to the service call invoice on the PDF when they get emailed. Trust me, it's worth it. One customer, one one customer, one client who decides, hey, listen, they haven't told me about this, and then it takes you to court and then sues you or disputes you charge with a credit card, right? You have a signed legal document, a disclaimer, right? If they disputed a charge for a thousand bucks, well, guess what? You're at a thousand dollars. And if you're an employee, your cost your 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 your, your company's at $1,000. And if you're the kind of employee who goes, oh, it's the company's money, who cares? Well, guess what? You really shouldn't be an employee of that company, right? Because if the company is successful and profitable, so are you. And don't forget that your company is the one that feeds you and your family. Don't forget that. Number four, why is having a lease, leak search performed a better option? Listen, at the end of the day, Unless you're actually searching for a leak, everything else is just a band-aid. Sealant may work. Adding more blood to the to your you know to your body, you know, when the cut and gas is still there, it's still gonna leak out. You're buying them some time. But a leak search will show where the leak is occurring. And for routine leaks, Pipe Doctor, my company, we can make a repair. If it's on a filter dryer, if it's on a joint, it's it's you know, you don't see pinhole leaks in refrigeration copper unless it's like mini split tubing, but excuse me, that is a possibility. But for more compact, uh, complex leaks, such as those that, you know, in the coils, for the evaporator coil, the, you know, the coil that's in the air handler or above the furnace um, or the coil that's on the outdoor condenser, you know, the one that wraps around the whole compressor, around the whole circumference of the unit. It, uh, it can be more cost effective to replace or re, uh, that part or replace the entire system. Let me tell you something. If you need a new, if you have multiple leak, if you have a leak in a condensing coil and you find it, let's say you can make a repair. Let's say it's not a micro channel coil. It's a, you know, copper fin tube, you know, um, uh, condensing coil. I'll guarantee that one particular leak at that location, I'm documenting it with pictures and or video. If next week, next month, next year, another leak develops in that condensing coil, right? Well, guess what? The customer is going to be quite pissed off. So if I see a leak in an evaporator coil or a condensing coil, right? The evaporator coil is getting replaced in its entirety. And I'm going to guarantee that job, right? And if there's a leak in the condensing coil, right? I am not going to guarantee a repair on a condensing coil unless the condensing coil is replaced. And if the condensing unit is, you know, six, uh, not six, like eight, nine, 10 years old, you should buy a, install a new condenser. Especially if you're in my locale, my geographic area where we're, the proximity to the ocean, you know, could be hundreds of feet or a couple miles. Salt is in the air. So especially if you live, you know, oceanfront, beachfront, bayfront, on Long Island, the shore of Long Island, you have a, you know, from day one, it's starting to wear down. But if we do fix a leak and it's not in a coil, those will be warranted for material and labor. Okay. Last but not least, should I consider replacing my entire system? Well, depending on the age and the condition of the current system and the cost to make the leak go away, the repair, the wisest choice may be to replace it with a new higher efficiency system. Don't give them too much, right? You're, you're not there to sell them anything. You're there to present options. But there may be various rebates and credits available to make this option more inviting. Take a look at the words that I'm using. I'm not offering them financing. I'm not telling them about, hey, what is going to save them you know, on their electric bill? I'm keeping it simple, but I'm using special wording. 
right? There may be various rebates and credits available to make this option more inviting. Now, after explaining this page, which you basically have memorized and you're gonna use your own words, right? And don't just read it off like verbatim where you sound like a robot. You're not gonna, you're not developing any relationships like that. It sounds very like, you're just very monotone. Like explain it in your own words, explain this like you would explain it to a family member or your best friend, okay? But after explaining this in your own words, you have them read it here. Right, like on mine, right? I'm gonna show you. Let's go, no later. Let's go to oh, stupid I update nonsense. Right, I'm gonna show you. Right, you hand them the form, right? And there it is. Right, and you go here. Please read this for my protection, and yours. And unfortunately, there are more lawyers and HVAC techs out there, right? But for my protection, and yours, you know, right? And you can even say, listen, my boss is going to reprimand me if you don't initial or sign this, right? If you don't agree to this, then the service call is over. Have a nice day. Never get into a dispute or confrontation with the homeowner, the client, the customer, right? If they don't, if right now the conversation is going sour or south, right? Excuse yourself. I'm sorry, ma'am, sir. Uh, perhaps uh, if I offended you, I apologize, but I'm just trying to do my job. Right? It doesn't happen, right? Where they're just hell bent in it. They don't want to hear anything you're talking about and they'll just kick you out of the house. But don't be confrontational. If they don't want to sign it, by all means, you cannot proceed with a service call. Plain and simple. If they don't like that, say, I'm going to, I'm going to step out. Let me call my office. Let me speak to my, my uh, service department supervisor and I mean, make him aware of what's going on. And, um, you know, we'll make sure everything, everyone is happy at the end of the day. Try to diffuse the situation. And this rarely happens, right? If you, you know, show respect, there's, it happens once in a blue moon, at least for me. I maybe have, I've, you know, I will fire a customer personally, maybe, maybe once a year. And I probably see 1,500 people a year on active service calls, me personally. So once they, you explain this, you have them read it, you have them sign it, right? They sign and date the form. It automatically dates it. It becomes a part of the paperwork for the service call. And if you're using an electronic forms of, of invoicing, even better. It's one less form to pull out of the truck, to pull out of the briefcase, pull out of your, whatever, right? And if you're not, by the way, if you're not doing, if you're not, collecting payment upon completion you are losing money okay if you are not a cod company which means payment upon completion of the service call right you are losing money and i say that because if you are billing out the end of the day the end of the week end of the month whatever and then waiting to get paid you could have potential of hundreds of thousands of dollars in the field waiting you know to be received you know receivables that's insane Right? I don't care uh, how small or how big the job is or the, what the customer is, whether it's a residential, like commercial, whatever. Um, we get paid, except in a few occurrences where we work for like a warranty company or property management company where it's like, like Cushman and Wakefield, for example. Right, um, We get paid on the spot. Everyone has a credit or debit card these days. So keep that in mind. And if you haven't, if you're still on the old school method of sending out an email or sending out paper invoices, you need to email me and we need to have a conversation. And I will give you a little bit of my time as a consultant for free, but I will show you how to make, you know, how to run a successful and profitable contracting business, guaranteed, right? But there'll be no dispute once, once this, that form is signed. Once this form is signed and read, there's no dispute. Like I said earlier, if they want to sue you or dispute the charge on the credit card, uh, yeah, the credit they, they, that may be in limbo with a credit card company for a little while, right? But once you have this signed and they're complaining that it's leaks, they're done. You have no liability, which is the next part. You're releasing liability to the contractor. But most importantly, you're demonst you know develop that relationship. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. If you'd like a PDF file of this form, which 
is this right there, right? Um, email me, mike at mikeypipes.com. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like me to post more, you know, more like how-to videos on how to run a more successful contracting business, it doesn't matter if you're a carpenter, electrician, a roofer, or a chimney sweep company, um, all the principles are the same. And at the end of the day, if you show respect and care for your customer's time and property, right, you will command deserved respect, plain and simple. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, be well, God bless, stay safe.